Mixing vocals is easy, you just make it hard on yourself. My name is Anthony Delgado. I'm an audio engineer and producer. I've been doing this for over 10 years. And today I'm gonna break down the system that I use to mix vocals in any genre. If you follow this system, your mixes will improve by the end of this video. No bullshit, no fluff. Let's get right into it. Do you remember in math class when they taught you about the order of operations? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Well, mixing has a similar concept. Following the correct order of operations will drastically improve your mixes, speed up your workflow, and help you get to the creative ideas faster. I'm gonna go step by step and show you how to do this regardless of the DAW that you're using. We're just talking about plugins here. It also does not matter what plugins you use just so long as you follow the concepts that each plugin is trying to achieve. Here's the overview. First, you wanna level your vocal, then pitch correct it, then do some subtractive EQ, then some de-essing, then peak compression, additive EQ, then some shaping compression, and then finally limiting. First, we want to level our vocal. You can do this in a couple of ways. One way is to go in and manually do automation on each line and make sure that it's all leveled the same way, or you can do the easy way and just use a vocal rider. Personally, I use a vocal rider because it's quick and easy, but but I'll go in and adjust clip gain if I need to. This step is extremely important. If your vocal isn't leveled, then you're gonna have an inconsistent sound throughout your track because the vocal is gonna be hitting the compressors either harder or softer, depending on the volume. Next up is pitch correction. Everybody knows what this is. You can slap some auto tune or some waves tune on that and make sure you set the key properly. If you don't know the key of your song, you can either use an online key finder or something like mixed in key. If it sounds robotic or it sounds like your vocal is like flicking between notes really, really quickly, you probably f***ed up the take. So go back, re-record it, and do it until you get it right. I would recommend recording with pitch correction on your vocal so you can get instant feedback on whether or not you're hitting the notes properly. Subtractive EQ comes right after pitch correction. With this EQ, you're not boosting any frequencies. You're just taking out the things that you don't like. What I like to do is clean up the low end, so I'll cut everything below like 100 to 150 hertz depending on the vocalist, and then I'll do a scoop from 300 to 500 because that's where that boxy tone is and it really, really doesn't sound good. After that, I usually do a sweep to find any harmonic frequencies that are just jumping out way too much, but I don't do too much here. Less is more. You don't want to have your EQ looking like a hair comb. Next up, you want to DS your vocal. After you compress later on in the chain, if you don't DS now, it's going to sound really, really harsh as you can continue to add compressors. I actually like to have two DSers, so I'll have one before my peak compressor and then one after my peak compressor. And I really only do this for peace of mind. You don't have to, but you can. This is really just personal preference. Next up is peak compression, and this is used just to tame the peaks of your vocal. I usually use a compressor that has a bit of a faster attack and like a medium release, but using one where you can actually adjust the attack and the release is probably the best. I use the CLA-3A usually for my peak compression because I really, really like the tone, but again, just pick a plugin that works for you. You can use your own plugins. You can use stock plugins. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that you are applying these concepts correctly. Okay, so if you're trying to do subtractive EQ and you're boosting, it doesn't matter what plugin you're using, you're doing it wrong. Same with compression. One compressor might sound a little bit different than another compressor, but that's just like the artistic part of mixing. You, you get to pick that. The concept remains the same here. All I'm doing is taming the peaks so that I can shape the vocal later on in the chain. After peak compression, you can finally start doing some additive EQ. This is where you're gonna give your vocal some character and some life. Are you mixing an intimate indie song? Maybe you wanna give your vocal a little bit more low end, to give it some more body and presence. Are you mixing a super clean pop record? Then maybe you wanna boost the high end and give it some shine on the vocal. The settings here are going to change depending on what you're mixing, but just use some critical thinking and figure it out. Wanna make your vocal sound thicker? Raise some low end. Want your vocal to sound cleaner and more crisp? raise your high end. Do you need more presence in your vocal? Raise from two to 3K. I'll drop a link in the description to a vocal cheat sheet guide that you can use to make these decisions. Shaping compression is up next, and this one's probably gonna be a little bit tough to understand, especially if you don't understand compression fully, but I'm gonna try and make it easy for you. This step is where you determine what the transients of your vocal sounds like. The transients are the loudest parts of your vocal. For example, are you mixing an aggressive rap vocal where you want your vocal to jump out and bite at the start of new lines? Or are you mixing something a little bit more calm and intimate where you want it to be more smooth and, and relaxed? Thinking like that will determine your attack and your release. For more aggressive, bitier records, you're probably going to want to use a slower
power attack to allow some of those transients to come through and then have the compressor clamp down on the vocal. For something a little smoother, you might wanna do a little bit faster of an attack so you can smooth out those transients. Here you can go for a, a decent bit of gain reduction. Somewhere from two to six is totally acceptable. But again, this is all very situational. Compression is extremely complicated and I don't have all day to explain it, but this is the basics of what your shaping compressor should be doing. And finally, limiting. This is the part that everybody's scared of or doesn't really know how to do. Don't be afraid of gain reduction, but also don't go overboard with it. Since we broke up the compression across multiple compressors, right? We had the first one taming the peaks, the second one is shaping the vocal, and technically this third one, which is limiting, is gonna be squashing it. We can go for a bit more gain reduction than you might be used to. The reason why this is okay is because the compressors aren't working hard individually, but together they're doing a lot. A typical range of gain reduction for me here on the limiter would be like three to 10 decibels, but again, it's all very, very situational. If I'm mixing a pop record, I'm gonna go for more limiting because I want the vocal to stay present and upfront and consistent throughout the entire track. But if I'm mixing something like an indie record or an acoustic singer songwriter record, I might go a little easy on the limiting. Whatever you do, whatever you decide, just make sure you have good logical reasoning for doing it. Don't just say, oh, this YouTube video told me to do 10 decibels of gain reduction, so here we go. Use critical thinking and justify your actions at every step of the way. If you can do that, then your mix will have direction. And it might not be the greatest mix ever, but at least you'll have a, a clear idea of where you wanted to go. After limiting, that's pretty much the vocal chain. You can add effects onto your vocal, like reverb delay, stereo separation, using effect sends, but your main bass vocal chain is right here. This order of operations will get you a nice clean vocal and the rest is really up to you and your creativity. As promised, your mixes should be sounding better by now. Remember, it's not about what plugins you're using, but rather what you're trying to accomplish with each plugin. Use critical thinking to make your decisions and keep it simple. If you use FL Studio, I have a vocal chain available on my website. The link will be in the description. This will provide a great jumping off point for you and give you the opportunity to learn about what your vocal chain should look like. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you have any questions, drop a comment. I'll be sure to respond and subscribe to stay up to date on future uploads. If you're interested, there's a link in the description to my beat store, mixing services, and sound packs. Check out one of these other videos that YouTube recommends, and I'll see you next time.